Steve, I probably would not have been in the automotive industry. No. And just think no. what, uh, could you give Steve a big hand for that? <laughs> All right, so uh, let's jump in. It's great that uh, we're here. So we'll start our recording. This is uh, third part in Paid Search Strategies. And of course, the name Paid Search Strategies, Anita really corrected me. He's like, Brian, it's really display. It's retargeting. It's not paid search. I just use that as a general term of paying for a digital strategy to drive more low funnel traffic. Again, just for you coming in late, if you have attended all three workshops, there's a list going around. Put your name. It's in the back. Maybe move it to that section now. If anybody hasn't filled it out, anybody not fill out that sheet? Okay, let's move it to this side of the room and we'll uh, mail you a certificate. These are the uh, things that we're gonna take care of today. So we're gonna pick up with YouTube and video and then we're gonna talk about measuring success. Um, what I asked my uh, Edwards team to do, just to add a little bit more meat to today's discussion, is uh, even though uh, uh, Anita said Mobile is fantastic. Well, take a look at this. Uh, just in August, this is a, a small mobile campaign. Not a lot of uh, uh, dollars. This is $100. <laughs> um, 143 clicks, 116 calls. What you'll notice that the number of calls and clicks, how about that, cost per lead, 80 cents. We actually told them to do it. Yeah. I said, Devin, do mobile campaigns. Yeah. <laughs> so how about that? Um, would you like to get people, would you like an extra 116 people to call you? No, Brian, it's expensive. <laughs> Retargeting examples, a Jeep Chrysler Dodge dealer, 18,000 people, almost half a million impressions, 460 people came back. Not bad, right? Would you like to get 500,000 banner impressions to Consumers who visited your website, $2. And the reason why I'm showing the different rates is because, as Anita said, I can't tell you what your retargeting budget is going to be until we know the market conditions, competition, what keywords you're targeting and such. Hyundai, 9,500 people, 722,000 impressions, 1,418 came back, $1.31. Remember when Anita said that display could be less expensive than search. Remember, because in most markets, search is anywhere from a buck fifty to three fifty, right? I mean, would you like to have seven hundred and twenty-two thousand impressions in one month in a fifty-mile ring around your dealership? This display is expensive, Brian. It's <laughs> expensive. And then the last one: What did we do for Autocon? Most of you saw our video. Uh, um, retargeting and also our uh, banner retargeting. You'll see that that cost per click was a little more expensive. Um, but how about that? In when we decided to start doing retargeting, over a 1.1 million banner impressions. Some people came back. Um, I also included in a few minutes. You'll see the video pre-roll stats for AutoCon. How many of you saw a video pre-roll message for AutoCon? Yep. We, I, by the way, we've turned them off. So we yeah. won't, but thank God. Right. Okay, great. Um, so without further ado, would you please welcome once again Anita. From here. Okay. Oh wait, can you guys hear me? Does that work? Okay. <laughs> So the last sort of uh, product piece I want to talk about today and uh, the last piece to really having a full online marketing strategy is the video part of it. Um, video is proved to be the most engaging ad format for automotive dealerships and that was actually not a study done by Google, it was by a third party. So it's not even me just telling you this, it's me regurgitating what this third party had said. Um, and what we found also, uh, through a Google study of our own is that uh, nearly a quarter of people were prompted to do research after they saw a very, very engaging ad, uh, automotive ad. So there's no doubt that video is very, very important.
actually no, I was wrong, 30% of people, that number just keeps going up, uh, were encouraged to start researching after looking at online video ads. And also what's really important is how video plays into the lower funnel piece. So it's not just about brand engagement at the beginning, uh, but it's also the fact that close to 20% visited an automotive dealership after looking at a video. Wouldn't it be great if you could increase that number and show them your ad, your automotive dealership's ad, and you comparing models or you know, having some other kind of message in there that would really inspire them to go and test drive a car. So you can do that with video just as much as you can do that with a text ad or a mobile ad. And of course, you know, video influences brand choice. In the world where we've got so many different models and so many different manufacturers, and now you can get a hybrid car, an electric car, um, you know, you, there's a lot of imports. The Fiat released a new model in the US. With so many choices, it's really important to try to figure out how you can keep uh, your existing customers loyal to your brand and how you can um, bring more customers in. So when I say brand, I mean um, you know, the different manufacturer models that you offer in your dealerships. Um, so video can help you do that as well. 40% of purchasers indicated that online videos were helpful in helping them decide what sort of car to purchase. And I, and I, I want to just make a comment. Uh, it, it bears repeating. You say, Brian, I would never go on YouTube and watch a video about a car to make a purchasing decision. Okay? Don't overlay your prejudice against the data. Don't fight the tape. Okay? So regardless of whether you check, regardless of whether you use mobile to search for local, whether you use YouTube or influenced by video, it's really important that we don't overlay our prejudice. Let the data talk to us. Test. You saw some of the numbers, real life campaigns that just got snapshot today. The numbers don't lie and you just have to take a little bit of this uh, step of faith and uh, divert maybe 10 or 15 percent of your traditional budget and start trying some of these new formats. It's really amazing what can happen. Going along with video, um, the, as Brian mentioned earlier, I think it was in the first workshop, uh, YouTube is actually the second largest search engine um, and the first, uh, the most watched video site. So uh, there's no doubt that video, uh, YouTube is a great place to start experimenting with video and start creating video assets. Yeah, and actually, yeah, two thirds of new purchasers watch videos on YouTube before they actually watch them on OEM or manufacturer site. So just one thing I want to mention is I still think there is a stigma with, well, you know, the OEM just does a better job. And that's not true. YouTube also uses an auction model beyond just using a reserve by basis um, that lets you actually compete in the auction as well. So um, you are able to target YouTube not just through videos, but also just ensuring that your videos pop up on YouTube. And in the case that maybe somebody is watching in a manufacturer ad, you actually do have the opportunity through this auction model to show maybe a text ad right on top of that manufacturer ad. Oh, they're thinking about buying a Honda? Why don't you come to my dealership? Okay, yeah, maybe I will come to your dealership. So there's synergy, there's opportunity to kind of work together with those assets um, and also to create your own. So why YouTube? Number one online video site, the second largest search engine after Google. Um, do you guys know what the second largest video site is? No, it's, it's the mobile YouTube version. <laughs> so YouTube pretty much dominates the market. Uh, you know, and these numbers will, will just continue to grow, five billion plus video streams per day. That's actually from June 2011, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's much higher now. Uh, hundreds of millions of unique visitors coming to YouTube, and also, of course, precise targeting options. So uh, YouTube has a wide range of video creative formats of uh, just text ad or display ad creative formats and um, a wide range of opportunities for you to appear. You can appear when you enter YouTube, when you're watching, when you're browsing, when you're searching. So we'll talk about that more in this presentation and get more to the technical piece. And one thing I want to point out about YouTube users is that they're very engaged. Um, and this makes sense as we're multitasking and we're doing other things, we're looking on our tablet when we're watching TV. Our tablets are really our couch companions and our mobile devices are our constant companions. So 
uh, with these devices, we're actually more engaged and paying more attention to what's in front of us than even the TV screen that's playing behind you. And a lot of viewers have even taken action after they saw an advertisement on YouTube. And there is actually a pretty funny case study I'm going to show you guys in here. Yeah, so it's, it's right on the bottom there. You see this Aura Brush. Um, have you guys seen that video, the YouTube video for Aura Brush? Um, this guy struggled to make any sort of sales through traditional and offline advertising. And once he, uh, once he hit YouTube, he actually was able to sell a million units of his product I think just in a couple of years. So he became kind of a phenomenon. Um, yeah, on the side here. So there's kind of four key ways in which you could target YouTube. Um, the first way is through driving awareness and interest to your dealership. So it's possible to do that through promoted videos. These are not necessarily automotive examples, um, but some of this includes sort of SMB type examples where you know, it was clear that it wasn't as easy for them to kind of dominate the market as it would be for a large brand. Um, with Zappos, it was pretty easy to get their information on YouTube. The second piece of it is education. So here again, we, don't, we have an Italian company here, but um, YouTube is also a good tool to help inform your customers about your business um, and what kind of, of car brands that you sell. Um, if you have, you know, collision center, if you have a, um, you know, if you're able to do oil changes, all of these things are part of the education that you can give to the auto shopper so they can help the, your, your uh, dealership. The third piece of it is engagement, um, starting a conversation with your customers, getting them to interact with your brand. Um, this is, again, maybe a little bit more difficult for, for dealerships, but it is possible, and you can be the pioneer if you want to go down that route. And then the last piece of it um, is conversion, and that's you know, the easier part, driving sales and positive ROI from your YouTube videos. <coughs> One uh, thing that I found with video is that um, it's a leadership problem. So worked with a nine-store group. Two stores out of the nine ran with it. One was a Mazda dealership. So when the 2013 CX-5 came out, uh, maybe two weeks prior, we trained their dealership on how to do effective branding walk-around videos. Um, and we don't necessarily do that for the dealer, although we could, um, because we like it to be a little more raw and natural. Um, but uh, if you type in, uh, 2013 Mazda CX-5 MN or Minneapolis, 52,000 views in about three months. So it's often first to market as well. So I would like to tell you if you have 2013 models coming in, if they're not all in the dealership, the day that first one gets in, if you're the first to do the walk around video in your market, geo-targeted for your metro area, you will laugh at 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, especially if it's educational. If you take a look at what this uh, superstar salesperson did for the Mazda CX-5, it was from Maury's, Maury's Mazda, but two of their stores have just ran with it. They've done walk-arounds for every model. They're getting tens of thousands of views. Uh, referral traffic from YouTube because they have a link in the description box. You just have to decide whether you want to spend that expensive, you know, $400 for a camera, $150 for a wireless mic, um, $50 for the tripod. I mean, we're talking obviously triple permission, you know, uh, expenses. And uh, then find someone in your dealership who's just natural behind the camera, who knows the product, get it out there, increases your engagement on your landing pages, increases engagement in social media channels. So YouTube is in the center of video warehouse. Where you use it is really a matter of creativity. But if you want to see a, an unbelievable one, Mazda CX-5, uh, Minneapolis, and you'll see it, 52,000 views. Um, and what's also really cool is, um, this is something that we experimented with very recently uh, was YouTube for marketing. So you can actually even follow the users that watch your YouTube video um, or somehow subscribe to the channel that you created on YouTube and follow those guys around the web as well. 
So with her marketing, you've got really powerful capabilities to follow anyone who looked in your ad, whether it was you know, through a contextual campaign, through a, a YouTube campaign, and maybe sometime in the future through a search campaign as well. Um, but just another thing I wanted to point out. So it's really, um, YouTube is really powerful for all of these different reasons. You can achieve these goals through uh, different ad formats and different creatives on YouTube. Um, and it's important to get someone you know, who is forward thinking, who will, who will kind of take you this direction at your dealership. So, let's see here. As I mentioned, there's um, four sort of different categories in which you can target people who are on YouTube. Uh, as they enter YouTube, you can target them through this mass head. This one was for the movie Zombieland. Uh, as they are uh, in the discover stage on YouTube um, and they're, they're browsing a sort of different sort of channels or different categories, you can target them with TrueView in search or TrueView in display ads. Um, as they're watching content, uh, so they're watching a video on there, you could target them with a video before the content uh, actually plays. Um, if it's a longer video, I think it's 10 minutes or more, uh, you can target them with content uh, in stream while they're actually watching the video or also after they watch the video. Um, and then um, as they're really engaged with a brand channel, uh, it is a little bit expensive to reserve your own brand channel, but it's possible for you to target them as well <coughs> through that. And of course, mobile, there's a couple of different options there. So this is uh, just so you, so you know what we did for the uh, AutoCon video uh, remarketing. So. Uh, this is that video pre-roll uh, uh, thing. So 52,000 people watched it, 22% uh, with that. Uh, average cost per view was 20 cents. We spent 10 grand, 2,800 people came to the website. But understand that 52,000 people knew that this was an event, what it was all about, really developed the brand, 1.2% click-through rate, which is you know, uh, right in, in line with a video pre-roll, uh, $43 per thousand. So again, uh, this is a competitive uh, keyword kind of uh, thing, um, but I just wanted to, to let you know, we practice what we preach, <laughs> so we have the real live data, we know it's working, and it, I just wanted to let you know is that we don't, we don't mind sharing real numbers because you gotta go back and sell this right to your dealership. And if, if you didn't see real life numbers, I don't think it would have as much credibility. So there's full disclosure. We spent 10 grand, we believe it's well worth it. 600 people are here for a first time show, you know, in a very busy September market with OEM meetings all over the place. Um, so it was the best way. We did take out ads in automotive news, print ads, you know, they were very expensive. We can't really track any <laughs> registrations for that $15,000 for three weeks uh, or three issues. <laughs> um, you get the idea? I mean, uh, it's not that we don't test traditional, but this is, this is pretty amazing stuff. And thanks for giving us real life examples. It definitely helps kind of hammer the point home a little bit more. And as Brian mentioned, I mean, I'm not saying don't run a TV spot. You can go ahead and do that. And you know how many people you might reach maybe in that town, the neighboring towns, but you, you really don't know how many of them came into your, into your dealership because of that TV advertising. So with YouTube, it's a little bit uh, easier to see kind of the ROI of your efforts, if it's working, what you can do to change, what you can do to kind of increase that. If it's not working, what you can do to change it and try other options. So that was kind of it on YouTube. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, Anybody planning on trying? Oh, go ahead. I have a question. Um, should we, should we, the YouTube video, should we place our own banner underneath that? Um, so you can place a text ad, but again, it's not on a reserve basis. You'd have to enter your ad in the auction, um, and it could potentially show up for that video. But not necessarily, yeah. Um, you can do reserve buys on YouTube. Um, they're just very expensive. <laughs> Is there a way around that? I mean, 
No. <laughs> like I said, there it is possible to do a reserve buy. For example, um, there's something called the uh, first watch reserve buy, where um, for that day you um, are able to buy the video content that plays before every single video that is viewed. So let's say all of us decide to go to YouTube on the same day and we're all watching different videos, we'll all see the same ad before all of the videos that we watch. Yeah, but again, that's more on the expensive side. Although if you are dedicating $100,000 to traditional, it may not really be that expensive in the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so, sorry, YouTube is a little bit confusing. There's different names for everything. Um, so, you're able to um, create a video that can play before an advertisement starts, uh, or I'm sorry, before uh, a video starts, um, halfway throughout the video, um, and then after the video ends. Um, and then, additionally, you're also able to um, kind of display sort of text ads while the uh, video is being played. And uh, one, other, one other thought process, because I'm all about strategy. So Anita's doing a great job of showing why you need to engage and all the options. But don't forget customer testimonials. Think about this. Take the time, maybe hire a videographer for one day. Get t 10 really great, happy customers. Please get them from all ages and ethnicities. Create a little ma mashup about the experience. Could you imagine conquesting in a crowded, say, Honda market, and people are in YouTube, and you know they're competing against five Honda dealers, and you do a 15 or 30 second pre-roll that could just happen to show up <laughs> when people are searching for your competitors' dealerships or Honda searches, and in that 15 seconds, you have real people saying, I drove 20 miles, I drove 50 miles, I'm really happy with my experience. You get the idea? You know, and then the call to action is, you know, buy from the best, click here to join the, you know, Shelly BMW family. You understand, we're not just talking about product walkarounds, we're talking about how to differentiate yourself. You can't differentiate yourself really well in a banner ad with five people's pictures, smiling faces. They don't know if it's real customers or actors saying number one rated. But when you get five or six people in a little mashup, 15 seconds is a long time, by the way, you know, and 30 seconds. So I don't want you to think just product, just branding. Get your customers involved, and then these little video snippets can be promoted. They could be a three minute video and just do a promoted video or a short snippet for pre-roll, but YouTube is one of these untouched conquest opportunities that you could play with. And that actually brings up a really good point I wanted to mention earlier is you can't actually really do a successful conquest campaign on search. Um, we won't let those ads run because those are trademarked by your competitors and so we'll automatically uh, fail those ads. But on the display network on YouTube, you can run conquest campaigns. Um, and it actually is a pretty good strategy for a lot of dealers. Yes? Uh, is there a difference in the cost of the uh, pre roll versus the opt out with the two or three or four seconds? Sure. And then the ones you have to watch. Is, is there a difference in the price and is there an advantage to the customer opt out with the other hand? So, to tell you the truth, I don't know exactly how. Um, how that works as far as like why we let some videos play and why we let you skip some. I think it's more to do with the length of the video. Um, the thing is for those ads where people skip and they don't actually view it, you're not paying. So if they skipped your ad and they don't want to see it, you don't actually pay. So nothing really happens that way. And that way you know that if they're actually watching the ad and if they're at their computer, they're probably pretty engaged they want to watch it. Would it be advantageous if ad like that? Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions? Yep. Yeah, um, just okay. one other note. One of our uh, sponsors, which is uh, Carmercial, has a really cool video pre-roll product that goes across Google, Yahoo, MSN, uh, major CBS affiliates. It's a, it's a very wide scope. It's great for broadcast type, so for used cars. Anybody big used car you know, market, you want to, hey, anybody's interested in a used car, I want my brand. You could buy like 300, 400,000 impressions in a block, uh, target them geographically, and have them across uh, 
sites that are in the Google Display Network and not in the Google Display Network, okay? Google Display Network is very large, but it's not 100%, right? Um, and they're also doing a workshop tomorrow on video pre-roll. So if video pre-roll kind of teases you and we've started to have engagement, you may want to uh, attend that workshop tomorrow. It's quite impressive of the case studies that dealers are doing. If you want to say, hey, I like it, but give me some real facts of who's doing it, what are the numbers, uh, that's tomorrow's workshop. Okay. So we want to look at just, uh, and this section is really short, but just looking at a few different tools that are available to you to measure the success of your AdWords campaigns and your uh, online advertising efforts through Google. Um, so we've got two different sort of campaigns here, and this is kind of how we measure success for everything at Google, we look at direct response versus branding. Not to say one is better than the other, it's just that there's different success metrics for, uh, for these two different goals. So, um, I mean, most of these you're very familiar with. Conversions, how many conversions you get, how many clicks that you get, what is your cost per acquisition, what is your cost per click, um, what is your click-through rate, what is your conversion rate? You guys are all familiar with that. Uh, one thing I wanna mention that a lot of people don't really put much stock in, but they should, and it's a very important metric uh, on the display network, uh, something called view-through conversions. Does anybody know what those are? View-through conversions. So this is only, again, if you're running any display network campaigns. Uh, basically, what we'll do, what actually happens is um, a user will see your ad somewhere on the display network. Um, you know, it could be an image ad, could be a rich media ad. They don't actually click on it, but they do remember, okay, it's you know, the ABC dealership. Then they go back later on, sometime in the span of 30 days, uh, they go to your site via you know, bookmark, via organic listing, um, or direct URL, uh, and they actually convert. You know, maybe they call you, maybe they fill out a form, they book an appointment. So it, it, it's actually a, a way for you to get the most bang for your buck because you're not even paying for that click, but we know we can attribute that conversion to them actually seeing your ad sometime in the past 30 days. So uh, when you're looking at your cost per conversion, what you wanna actually do is look at your direct conversions, add your view-through conversions on there, and sometimes there's even more view-through conversions, um, and look at your cost per conversion that way, because those are also really important. And um, if you can log into your AdWords account or you can ask your representative, uh, make sure you just ask them to show you what those view-through conversions are as well. And that would be really important, right, for your retargeting banners. Mm -hmm. when, when we saw those stats, 1.5 million views, another group, 5 million views. Someone would say, well, only 2,000 people click. But what Anita is saying is that's not the whole story. Right. Forget, you know, if you put a tracking number on those banners, that's another conversion. And then these view-through conversions are another stat to look at. So, I, I hope you're getting excited, but there's a lot of data here to mine and a lot of opportunities for you to completely change the effectiveness of your digital thinking. Uh, then on the branding side, um, you may not be doing as much as, of the branding side, but it's still important to know what to look at if you are running a campaign. Uh, impressions, just how many times your ad is shown, what that cost per impression is. Placements, um, by placements we mean sites that your ad is shown on. Uh, so for example, we were running a Chrysler campaign um, and it was very successful, but for some reason, um, their ad kept showing up on teenage Japanese anime sites. So you know, as soon as they saw that, they were able to exclude that placement. Now that being said, maybe for uh, another market that actually could be a huge converting opportunity, but we could kind of figure out that for this, maybe it wasn't. <laughs> um, and then of course, the last three metrics that I don't think most people pay attention to, but again are really important for branding is the reach and frequency reports. So you can see how many people you're, you reached and how many times they looked at your ad uh, in a certain time period. And then the interaction piece is really more when you have a rich media ad or a video ad um, and you're looking to see how long they engage with it. Okay, they watched 10 seconds of the ad uh, and then they skipped it or yeah, they watched the whole thing or they watched 10 seconds and then they clicked to go to my website um, because they were able to do that. And just for clarification, uh, a rich media ad, if you haven't seen them, those are the forms that are inside the banners. So you actually can click 
on the banner, it has a little form so you could fill out first name in the, the banner. Okay, you may not see them. They're normally reserved for people with a little more sophisticated design budgets. But Rich Media would allow you to, uh, and I've seen it for so the OEMs, they have yeah, something okay. and it will say click for more information and you think that you're going off site, but it just drops down and says first name, email, it, it's pretty cool. So that would be an interaction. Mm -hmm. um, and also for, not relevant for automotive, but uh, uh, there was this movie called Beer Land or Beer something, do you remember? Has anybody seen that movie? It was some kind of, you know, kind of a dumb like college movie uh, centering around these guys going to Oktoberfest, Beer Fest, that's what it was. <laughs> I actually didn't see it. Um, but they had... <laughs> <laughs> you guys are watching, uh, you know, indie films and, and foreign movies, right? Oh, no. Uh, so they had this, like, game that you could play. You could play, like, some sort of game, and then at the end, it would take you to uh, the movie site. And I thought that was actually pretty clever, uh, just a way to really engage people and make them go see that movie because they just played the game, and they, you know, started getting attached to your brand. So. Uh, I'm, maybe you could do a car racing game for automotive, I'm not sure, but <laughs> that's another example of rich media. And thanks, Brian, for you know, kind of explaining all this at Google. We get very down in the weeds and very into the product, the solution, so sometimes I forget that the terms that we're using are not as, as clear.